Good evening, everyone. Ah, damn. Well, welcome to Terraria, I guess. Runs a little slow for some reason. Nah, it doesn't matter. So this is Terraria, which, in a lot of by a lot of people, has been said to be like Minecraft, inspired by Minecraft, or in some way related to it. Which I honestly think is just it doesn't really matter. I mean, every goddamn shooter is supposed to be based after Doom, so we're not complaining about that. We're not pulling up Doom every time we talk about FPSs. We just enjoy the game and learn to shut the fuck up. Because that's what you're supposed to do when you're playing a game. You don't analyze and say, Hmm, this game looks like something else. So I'm not going to pull that up anymore. Well, except for a few times in the comparison of resource gathering. For example, this is dirt. And it's going to suck a lot because dirt's really, really useful. Useless. It's got a nice flat patch of flat land over here, which is, to be honest, really nice. You'll get nice flat land like that. I don't know why, but Terraria's generator used to screw me over with really bumpy terrain. So, that should be enough wood for now. So, let's make a crafting bench. Okay. Um, some necessity. Oh. Uh, I kind of wish I could fix that damn lag. A wooden sword. Copper short short sucks a lot. Ooh, nifty. Um, and now it speeds up for no goddamn reason. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I might just play this game like Minecraft on the big computer. I have two. I have a laptop, which I prefer playing on because I really hate sitting up straight. It's more that I can't sit up straight in the right way that it doesn't hurt my back. I don't know what that problem's all about. And great, we start also next to a large ocean. Eh, so the beginning of every game is slow and just generally very uninteresting. I won't blame you if you don't watch this episode, because... Well, actually, my intention for the series is to just go to hard mode, because I am not good enough at this game. To do anything in hard mode, I'll try. If that entertains you, I'll really try to go to hard mode. But I'll suck a lot because I'm not good with games like this. I'm not too good with games that require reaction time for some reason. It's not because I have a bad reaction time, but because I just don't know what to do. I'm also very cheap and I tend to save resources when I really shouldn't be. Like, I save up a lot of potions, and I never ever use them for anything, which is stupid for thousands of reasons. Actually, this is how slow Terraria plays without anything, and that's curious considering how very, very primitive the style is that it runs this slow. But I'll tell you why that is. It's because Terraria has a gorgeous lighting engine. It's, it's probably my favorite bit about Terraria, is the lighting engine. Which is something I won't say at any other time. I am not a graphics person. I don't give a crap how good your game looks. I want a game to be fun to play. And for me to say that a lighting engine is really just the pinnacle of the game's enjoyment just shows you did a really good job, people who made this. And they did. It's, it's, a f it's, it's fun. It's Minecraft has an eerie light engine. It doesn't work in the way that it gives an adventurous sense to finding through caves, but this does. There is complete darkness, and there's just fun all around. So let's get this house up and started so that I won't have to worry about this guy dying, although I probably will. The AI is kind of stupid when it comes to uh, non-player characters, which is just oh, god-awful. If you had bad AI for your NPCs, that's just, that just, don't put in it, that, I mean bigger games, like, eh, like games where you have an assistant, you want to have good AI for that. And here the AI is just stupid, I mean even in Minecraft they managed to get the NPCs to just stay in fucking doors during the night. So now we, we pretty much are set to go into a cave or something, I think I'll just loot and see where the dungeon is for now which is 
relevant later. You don't need to go to the dungeon, which I think is nice to have something optional like that. In fact, there is no direction to this game whatsoever. There's never a game, a direction for games like this, which is nice. And yet I feel pressure to do it. So I'll play this to as far as my ability will allow me before I piss myself in fear over the inability to compete to the requirements. And I'll hope that's that's not too soon. And I'm bad at this, as I said, it's the reason I play on softcore. Next to the fact that the game was released on softcore mode, I believe. I don't know. I, I played this from the start, I was pretty interested. I didn't care about the whole Minecraft Terraria debate. I didn't I didn't give a, a crap about it. I thought that just people whining about nonsensical stuff. It's a fun game, and it's not the same. Then why complain? Why complain? It's like chocolate cake and strawberry cake. They're both cake. There's just one minor difference that happens to change everything about them. And if you're going to complain about them both being cakes, then obviously you have the wrong priorities when trying to make dessert. And I really wish I could get some more slime. Because with one torch, it is impossible to explore correctly. Ooh, heavy copper pickaxe. That doesn't really matter, the speed of a weapon when trying to dig, which kind of sucks. Because digging takes a while with a pickaxe. I hope this cave goes down deep. Because the last thing I want to end up with is a very shallow cave at the start. It saves a lot of trouble. Arrgh, die! Come on! There you go! Oh, got four. Arrgh. So you heal by default. There's nothing you need to do to generally just heal. You just need to avoid getting hit, I guess. Which is... It's much like an FPS, but unlike most FPSs where the healing system is like, avoid and you'll heal in two seconds! Now get back to battle! Here it's more like, you gotta, you just, you just don't want to get hit, you see, because you can get hit, it's, it's just there as a safety. But generally, not getting hit is the way to go. You can heal, but healing items, let me show you, have like this 60 minute cooldown. Which is very reasonable considering the heal rate and the items you get later on. It's, it's a safety cushion. Getting hit is like your last priority. It's your first priority, not getting hit, is what I mean. Ugh. I did not prepare this. I don't ever prepare anything. I'm a slacker. And that's how I like it. Because preparing things means worrying about things, and I hate worrying about things. And I, I'm one of those people that has very poor inventory management. <laughs> In the sense that I just have... I take a lot of shit, I, stuff I shouldn't be taking with me at a given point. But I like to be prepared, which is exactly why I do take a lot of stuff with me that I shouldn't be taking. Eh. <sighs> well, I guess that it everything has a flip side, and being well prepared has the flip side that you carry a lot with you. They should make that a trait in, in uh, things like Fallout. Well prepared. Though actually they have one, I believe it's Pack Rat or, or Horde or something, where you get negatives if you don't carry enough stuff around. You could just carry lead weights, I guess, as some sort of filler, if you could find something. I don't play that game enough. I haven't played it at all. I haven't even played Fallout, played Fallout 3, so I have no idea what it's like. I do play the Elder Scrolls. I don't play Fallout because I like magic things. I mean, oh god, there's a tree up there. For yeah, if there's a tree on something, you can't break it, which is... Really, really annoying if you're trying to explore like this. It's literally a kick in the shins. You're like down there and you want to get up. And you could break that block. But then you have to waste... It doesn't matter because later you get stuff and you could just fly over entire mountains in two minutes. Which... It's, it's, it's really interesting how this game progresses. It's, it's fun. I'll, I won't say it's unfun. This is a very good game. There's a lot of design into it. It's it's not original in the sense that I'd say it's, it's like a whole new experience. But I will say that it definitely gave me an impression on something. That the 2D genre isn't lost. Which is what some people say is that the, the, the cartoonish 
2D thing is lost, it's what I sometimes hear. I don't know who that says that, but if you say that, then obviously you haven't been on the internet in ages, because there are a lot of good games out there that are not 3D, and they're called Flash games, and some of them are really good, and they're 2D, and they can be platformers without action aspects whatsoever. But I do say that a lot of mainstream games are based around action. Even this, it's, it's, it's very awkward to see how many games are just about blowing things up that get pumped into the news. But I guess action is just the one thing you won't find in real life. You play a game because you want to do something you can't do in real life. And I have no idea why the crafting scrolls so slowly. I mean, look at me move. The crafting just goes for so slow for no reason whatsoever. Four iron bars. <sighs> if I had one more, I could make an anvil. And if I can make an anvil, I can actually get some things done. Great start. Well, it is the beginning. I won't... It's it's the beginning, and every beginning begins the same. Slow. Annoyingly slow. I actually don't have to switch to these things. I could just stay on my sword. Which is a very... It's, it's an awesome feature to put into any game. Shift, and boop. Let go. Boop, boop. It's nifty. It, it does its job. And if I do it into there, boop. Ha! It saves a lot of effort. It streamlines the game a lot, and it frees up your quick bar, especially in exploring in dangerous caves filled with enemies. It really, really helps, but I'm not used to it because I played the game before that feature is introduced. And I'm bad with adapt ad adapting to new useful features, which really, really annoys me. I should get used to that because it could save my life a lot. Arr. And yeah, I made this character just randomizing everything. And then just setting up some fun colors. Yeah, I think I'm going to end it soon. This is taking a while. How about this? I'll look for a chest, and if I find one, then I'll quit. So I'll leave the chest as some sort of... Um, what's it called? I'll leave the chest as like a cliffhanger. A cliffhanger, yes. Not that I need a cliffhanger. I don't have a lot of people watching me right now. Oh! Would you look at that? A, a chest. It's it's like it's like the terrain generator. I randomly placed a treasure chest there, like it's supposed to, like it's made to do. It's not like oh, there's another chest over there. That's that's not a coincidence. That's just random terrain generation or pseudo random actually. If you're a bit of a nerd, you know that every random number generator is a pseudo number generator because you can't generate random numbers with a computer. Computers are predictable. Computers work according to a pattern. Oh, now I spoiled the surprise. Ooh, grenades. Those are fun. Well, how about I make this treasure chest, the spoiler. And I might die soon. But luckily I'm on softcore, so I'll only lose a few coins. So, I'm going to open this chest next time. And you'll get to see it next time. But Terraria really doesn't save your location, so I have to walk back from the beginning next time if I stop I could just cut the recording but I'm too lazy to cut the recording so instead I'm just gonna end it and we'll see next time what's in chest number one or I could stop the recording check myself start it up next time and act surprised we'll see next time if I did that or the other